The upcoming video excerpt is taken from the 2.5-hour research-based documentary titled The Road to Freedom, a Lama Mashriki's historic journey from Amritsar to Lahore, produced by scholar and historian Nassim Youssef. The clip delves into why Mashriki turned against British rule, decided to overthrow it, and formed his private army of over five million Kaksars, known as the Kaksar Tariq, or Kaksar Movement. It emerged as the most disciplined and powerful force in the entire Indian subcontinent, causing the rulers to fear it, and ultimately leading to their relinquishment of power. History books would not reveal this truth. Watch the complete film on social media platforms, including YouTube and Facebook, to witness how Mashriki compelled them to leave the Indian subcontinent, now comprising Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh. Additionally, don't forget to listen to the audio version of Mr. Yusuf's published article titled The British Chessboard, Jinnah, Gandhi, and the Strategic Divide of India. Now view the clip from the documentary. Mashriki also saw the miserable conditions of the masses under British rule. He said, People ask me that I traveled the East for years. What have I seen? How shall I tell what I have seen? From this end to that end I saw towns in ruins, broken and shaken bridges, dirt-clogged canals, dusty streets, abandoned highways. I saw wrinkled faces, undernourished bodies, stooping backs, empty brains, insensitive hearts, inverted logic, aberrant reason. I saw oppression, slavery, poverty, pomp and vanity, detestable vices, clusters of disease, burnt forests, cold ovens, barren tilths, dirty attire and useless hands and feet. I saw brothers who were foes to one another. I saw days without purpose and I saw nights which lead to no dawns. Will Durant, an American historian, wrote in his book The Case for India, I went to India, one-fifth of the human race, suffering poverty and oppression bitterer than any to be found elsewhere on the earth. I was horrified. I had not thought it possible that any government could allow its subjects to sink to such misery. And the more I read, the more I was filled with astonishment and indignation at the apparently conscious and deliberate bleeding of India by England throughout a hundred and fifty years. I began to feel that I had come upon the greatest crime in all history. William Digby, a British writer, mentioned in his book, Prosperous British India, a revelation from official records. Time was not more distant than a century and a half ago, when Bengal was much more wealthy than was Britain. How is it now? Thus, there are many, many more rich men in the little of England comprised between Liverpool and Barrow on the west coast and Hull and Newcastle-on-Tyne on the east coast than there are in the whole of the British provinces of India.